Asia. My guests in the studio this afternoon are Sue and Byron Harvey from TAME. Um, j- just before we talk about what we think perhaps we should be prioritising here, what do you think of this potential levy, Byron? It's strange, to be honest with you. Uh, um, first I've heard of it, to be honest with you. So they're going to levy everybody towards whatever we want it to be done. Is that is Well, it, it will allow our local authorities to raise funds from developers who are undertaking new building projects in the area and it can be used to, to sort of fund infrastructure. Yeah. That's basically yeah. how it works. Because there's, there's a gap. I don't think they'll be very interested, though, do you, to be honest with you, the builders. But, I mean, in principle, it's a good idea. Mm. I mean, we've got to find money from somewhere for all of those things. Doctors, roads, schools, hospitals. Where it comes from, I don't know. And, and how you prioritise it is just very, very difficult, to be honest with you. Mm. Very This, this kind of money raising? Well, it, it's it's almost like a little too late, isn't it? I mean, the amount of building that's been going on over these last few months, the fields we're losing, um, the lack of schools, the lack of doctor surgeries, the lack of roads and road repairs, everything. Um, the builders are not going to be very happy with trying to fund some of that, are they? Because mm. they're certainly not going to fund... Or anywhere near what we really need. So we, with we it. need all three. I mean, that the, bottom, we the bottom line is we need more doctor surgeries, we mm. need more schools, and we need mm. better roads. We need improvements to our roads. Yeah. Let's just talk to uh, Jared in Oxford City who joins the conversation. Jared, welcome. Hello. What would you prioritise? Quite frankly, I think the biggest problem we have at the moment is traffic, and that's onto infrastructure roads. The problem is, is right now in Oxford and in Abingdon and very and other outlying villages, is that every day there is severe traffic to the point of basically being gridlocked. And the problem is, is that we're going to be building lots more houses, and all that's going to do is extend how long the traffic lasts. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, we're doing this on roads that were built hundreds of years ago for uh, the occasional horse and carriage. And now we've got thousands and thousands of cars going through these places and there's just no way to deal with it and the problem is is that the government and the councils they all they spend all this money on new traffic lights and fancy new pedestrian crossings but they spend no money on expanding our road structure and that's basically what i feel is the crux of the matter here we're going to bog down our roads to the point that we can have thousands of houses but people just don't have a way to get out of towns reliably is that the crux of the matter byron roads is that the priority well yes i I don't disagree with with what jared's saying but equally you know i would say that uh, Doctors is just as a bigger priority. I mean, to wait three, four weeks now for an appointment to see a doctor, Mm. to me, is just ludicrous. You could also argue that that, that if you've got the provision of schools where new developments are are happening, then, you know, people can walk to school. They won't be on the roads. You Mm. know, they can get their children to school locally. Absolutely. But you see, coming back to roads, as I I said earlier, they keep telling us that uh, we're paying all this road tax to have permission to put your car on the road. Where does that road tax go? It doesn't go back into the in- infrastructure of, of rebuilding mm-hmm. roads. Mm-hmm. And but that's what... With, well, I think the other problem with having more doctors is, is that to have these doctor surgeries, you need to have doctors. Yes. Yeah. And that just goes into another issue. So yes. we can say yeah. we need more doctor surgeries, but the problem is is that you can't just throw money and have a doctor surgery. No. You need, you need the people, whereas with roads, at the very least, they can be built. You can't build doctors. They have to be trained, which takes many years. That's a good point. And so mm. it's sort of like prioritize the things that will make the biggest difference mm. with the money you have. And mm. the problem is, is the council's very short-sighted. It's how can I get the most votes? How can I be mm. the most popular? And the easiest thing and the most effective thing for them to do is to build roads to stop traffic. Mm. And that may actually bring in people who are educated like doctors who are thinking yeah. actually this isn't a bad place to live mm. that is there a very traffic all that the time is a very good point because access uh, yeah is incredibly important yeah. it could you know it can vastly you know it can be the, the mm. make or break in fact of mm. of somebody actually taking a job in an area when you think of the billion schools sorry jared sorry. say that again the thing with schools is that 
if we're going to be building all these schools in, onto these roads which are bustling with traffic, there's a huge risk of the safety for children. You know, we're going to have thousands of cars. Yeah. People are going to be frustrated and you're going to have children crossing roads, mm -hmm. walking to school. And so that, again, causes a lot of risks. And it's something that could be fixed by something as simple as a bypass around yeah. the town so that not the whole of Oxfordshire's traffic is driving through the centre of Abingdon to get to the 834 or something. Mm. But, I, but I also feel, and I, you know, <laughs> it's a sort of a heart and a head thing, but if there is no provision, no extra school provision... Our, our young people, you know, that, that should always be a priority investment. Investing in our young people, you know, should should yeah. never be compromised, Jack. But then we come back to the problem of where do we get teachers from? Because another thing schools have problems with is lack of teachers. And it comes back to the same argument with the doctor's surgery. We can build a school, but if you can't fill it... We're going around in do. circles, aren't we? Are, we? Aren't we? So, let, let me come back to the schools then. You're saying about, you know, we're not having, we haven't got the teachers and things. You look at the size of the classrooms these days. No wonder we haven't got teachers. We haven't got enough room and enough space for our children to be taught properly by mm. um, educated teachers because they get well, the stress level. I've got a friend who's um, a teacher, and the stress level on her is just unbelievable. Mm. A class of well, thirty-six children—it's too much. Too much for any I mean, one I'm person. At the moment, and the university openly says that they have trouble finding lecturers, and it, it kind of makes it difficult because you want to go into education, and you want universities to be built. You want all these houses and everything, but the biggest problem we have is we can't supply teachers or doctors or, or all these people that are necessary in order to build these facilities. Mm. But again, you come back, I mean, we're going we're to go around in a circle again because yeah, you've yeah. got the teachers, <laughs> but then they can't fill the jobs because they can't afford the housing. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. I think that's what's got r gone wrong in this country, to be honest with you. It's yeah. the impossible the question. The impossible question. Yeah. And to be honest with you, the price of properties today are just scandalous, Agreed. to be honest well, I mean, with you. you pay more in rent than you do for a mortgage. Absolutely. Yeah. When, when you but see some of the rents in... Sorry, Jared, carry on. You can't, you can't pay the deposit. And that's where it is. That you mm. People can happily mm. pay a mortgage. They yeah. can pay way more than the mortgage is asking for. Mm. Absolutely. The deposit at the beginning that they want is the stumbling block. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 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 I think you're right. So, but, you know. Yeah. It's still that we're very greedy. Or builders are incredibly greedy. greedy. So, but they can get it. In my opinion, I feel that the biggest problem we have is we can't. Build, well, there isn't roads in place to support the sheer amount of traffic and people that would come from building these houses and these schools and these surgeries. So that's the starting point. It is the roads. I feel that that is the problem. Uh, to be honest with you, Jared, I'm, I'm listening to the argument, I, I tend to agree with you because cars aren't reducing on the road, they're increasing. Mm. You know, we keep yeah. saying, well, use public transport, but people aren't using public transport, and there are more and more cars. I mean, you've only got to look at the houses where we live. There's not one car there anymore, there's three, four. Could bring, yeah, a thousand houses could bring 2,000 cars. You know, and, and, and again, you come to industry, when you, when you think of the millions of pounds that's lost every week in the industry because of traffic jams, I don't know if you watched the programme mm. recently about uh, Cowley, the mini works and they literally have cameras on the m40 and all the roads where their engines come from because if the engines don't come to the production line at the time they need it it costs the company millions mm -hmm. in lost mm -hmm. production so again it comes down to road structure i'm going around i mean that's another point yeah we can't even get the materials to the building sites to build the houses that's right <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm going around in circles. I really am, yeah. uh, Jared, but some really, really good points yeah. from you. I thank you very much uh, for joining the Cat & Co conversation. Right. I'd love to hear from you as well. Do you agree with Jared? Do you think actually that when we're talking about infrastructure, the priority should not be the doctor's surgeries, not the schools, but the roads? That 
is the best and the, the, the best basis and foundations to build a better community. That is where we should be spending the money when we're talking about infrastructure. Agree? Disagree? Mm. I'm going round in circles. I think we all are here in the studio. Mm. A, this is a very, very large conversation. 03459 311111 on text 81333. Start your message with the word Oxford. But when you think about it, the road structure is a foundation. You can't build a house without a foundation. So you've got to build that foundation before you can put anything mm. around it. And that uh, Jared's made a very good point, to be honest and with And I you. think, actually, it should be down to the builders. I think they should start paying up a little bit more. They get a lot out of it. Come on, let's have uh, let's have some new roads. And then hopefully things will start to pull together instead of pulling apart, which is what it appears to be doing at the moment. Sue has spoken. Yes. Uh, three, four, five, nine, three, <laughs> double, one, one, double, one. Do join in the Cat and Co conversation this afternoon. BBC Radio Oxford. Travel. <laughs>